to another episode of Outcast to Icons. Now, um, in the last episode, we actually set a, a, a target of 150 likes, and you guys smashed it. Frankly, I wasn't expecting that. So I'm going to try something a little bit different. We're going to try and set a little bit more of an ex not an expensive target, a slightly higher target of 250. Now, if you can manage that, then hey then I'll be very, very pleased. Right, now, uh, moving on. Now, we've got a couple of things to talk about before we get into today's episode. Um, first thing is I got a comment last night, and I love being able to do the videos a bit closer so I can reply to stuff that I can't always get to so quickly. And apologies for not getting back to the comments because I saw some fantastic comments, and I really do want to get back to them. But I was busy uh, helping my girlfriend move house, basically, uh, yesterday. So it was very, very stressful. And I'm knackered today, but that's just how it works. Um, but yeah, it was I believe it was Dave the Trequatista in the comments asked me um, about audio plugins. Now, the reason I couldn't reply to you in the comments, Dave, is because um, either your Google Plus settings, basically, I can't respond to the comment, which was annoying because I really wanted to. So basically, I, those of you who don't know, I use Reaper um, for my sound to edit it as a separate file, and then I splice it together. That way I can do some audio editing on it. And the reason I do so is because I find that the dry signal is just isn't nice enough. It doesn't have that sort of warm baritone sound that you're kind of used to from my videos. And um, basically, Dave asked me what plugins I use, because I said that I will. And I'm going to talk about all of this sort of stuff in more detail when I do that uh, series I was planning on how to start a YouTube channel. Not pretending I know what I'm talking about, just doing what, telling you what I did to start. And it's obviously worked to some extent. So I thought, why not, you know, share with you things that I learned along the way, and it might be helpful for some of you that are just starting out because I really would like to see some more um, new FM YouTubers for FM 16 basically be good to make the community bigger um, but basically the simple fact of the matter is for audio plugins I only really use two there's one I used a bit but I don't have access to it anymore because it's very very expensive uh, basically my girlfriend is like an audio tech um, so I have access to things that perhaps you wouldn't normally which is puts me at a slight advantage in that sense but that plugin I don't use anymore because she's left uh, that particular yeah um, but basically what I use, um, those of you who have done sort of anything with audio in the background will know about this company. Basically, they're a company called Waves, and they make a series of audio plugins. They're quite pricey, but you can get them in bundles, basically. Like, each plugin usually costs about $125, but you can sometimes get pl uh, bun bundles of plugins for, like, 150 but you get like 30 of the plugins so it's actually quite a decent deal when you think about it on the surface just never buy them straight out um i got this one as part of a pl i can't remember i don't think the bundle even exists anymore i've had it for a while but basically the one i used to get this sort of um quite deep but really thick sound is called jjp vocals um i think jj i think it's jjp vocals it's they have it's definitely still on there i don't know if it's part of a bundle at the moment but that's the one i use um for this and obviously i have presets which i then made using that and um i also use a deesser which they have but you don't have to use a waves DS, which was again part of the bundle you can get plenty of free deesser plugins and that just removes that kind of um hissing sound sometimes when the, with the hard s's you can sometimes get one to get rid of plosives as well but pop guards usually do that too um basically the only reason i have this stuff is because i was in a band for about three or four years before I did YouTube basically um, well before I started doing this as well my hobby kind of thing so I had all the stuff kind of prepared because we used to do home studio stuff and I used to record my own stuff too so it's kind of just stuff I had left over and I figured why not try and apply it so there you go Dave that's what I use um, I can put a link to the, the plugins in the description if you're interested as well um, but I really wouldn't recommend uh, shelling out that kind of money uh, just unless you have other uses for it I suppose um, so there we go. Right, yeah. Other thing is, of course, um, I really did enjoy seeing the comments about how you guys found the channel, and it's great. And it kind of got me an idea of like where we need to be going from here as well. And I think the way I, you know, a lot of you guys were basically saying that you liked it because we did sort of slightly more obscure teams, and it wasn't just the same stuff, and we did things slightly differently here. And I like that. I don't know why I keep saying we. It's the royal we. Um, so that is going to continue. Um, come FM16, I'm looking at doing, obviously we always start with a rebuilding series, so I'm not sure who yet. I'm thinking perhaps someone like Yeovil, or maybe if we can get a decent database, someone like Hereford United. Um, they have really fallen, uh, but we'd need an extended database for that. But that would be quite a fun one, and that could take a long time, but that could be a really quite lengthy series. And of course, I really do want to do um, Sweden or Bust again, uh, which would be a cool one with someone like, perhaps not... Um, IFK Yotobo again, but someone different and just try and mix things up a little bit. Plus, I've got some new ideas for series that I've been working on as well. Apologies, that's my phone going off in the background. Right, we've talked long enough. Also, expect more editing in videos from now on. I had to take a little break from that yesterday, but hopefully we should be back to what we did uh, in the last episode of Outcast Icons very soon. Right, that is enough babbling from me. Um, I would do a question of the day, but uh, that's actually screw it. Let's do a question of the day. The question of the day, let's just pick one quickly. Uh, what is your favourite film? Okay, um, my favourite film technically is a film called Eurotrip. Now, that sounds really sort of cheesy because it is not the best quality of film, but the fact is it has sort of special meaning to uh, my friends and I, basically, because I accidentally downloaded it thinking it was Ice Age, um, waiting... I, it took me seven minutes into the film before I realised that it wasn't Ice Age, let's put it that way. So I was a fucking idiot, uh, is, is the, cent the central gist of that one. But it is a good film. It's very quotable. But in terms of like actual good films, there's a film called The Giant Mechanical 
Man, which is a quality film as well. So yeah, what are your guys' favourite films? And if you've got an idea for a question of the day, leave it in the comments with the hashtag QOTD. My God. I can slow down a little bit now and take a breath. Now, um, in the last episode, of course, we were defeated by Sampdoria 2 0, which was disappointing, but I felt like we're not quite there yet to be challenging with those three sides. I think Genoa we can still challenge. We were a little bit unlucky in the one game we have played against them so far. And as you can see, we did get back on the horse very quickly. We've been good at this. Like, we've rarely suffered two defeats in a row, apart from that one with the Juventus and Napoli games. We've been very good at getting back up and getting going again. Now, against Albino Lefe, we were fantastic. We really, really were. And the problem is, as you can see, I only made one substitution in this game. The reason for that is because we had so many injuries that when it came to time to make substitutions, I was looking at the bench and I didn't want to bring any of them on. In my mind, a half-fit version of some of the players we had on the team was better than some of the players we had on the bench. And the only one we brought off was Falcao because I think I actually had someone we could bring in there. But Elvis returned and as you can see, he grabbed a brace. So always good there. Geronimo Garcia and Simone Capra adding goals to it as well. And generally we were the better side, but 4-0 perhaps was a little bit uh, flattering on us but two goals for Elvis good to see him back but we're sort of nursing him back and it's been really difficult because we just have lacked so much in those areas next up we had Torino away and this was a very very tight game but as you can see we have managed to get a decent amount of shots on target and once again Simone Capra scoring a goal for us and he's getting quite a few this year now and that is that's really, really positive. And the more he can do that, the better, really, because he's one of the most important players we've got, particularly with Caterini being out. He's sort of really had to step in. He did well in the first game we played, um, but he sort of fell out the team slightly. Next up, we have Fiorentina. I was surprised that we were able to win this as easily as we did, to be honest. Once again, we're getting a lot more shots on target now. This system is really starting to grind out good results. Uh, we took the lead through Oscar Barile, albeit from a corner this time. Uh, but then Luciano Verret uh, Vieto, who's actually at Fiorentina in this save now, interestingly, got them right back on level terms. But only three minutes later, Jerome Ronomar Garcia on the score sheet again before Wang John Ho wrapped up the points for us. And I did not expect to win this one. I thought a draw would have been a decent enough result, but we did get it, and that is great. Elvis did pick up a knock. Uh, as you can see, it was quite a serious one, but I don't think he was out for too long, if I recall. Uh, next up, we have Palermo. Did have to play Slavi Dancic. Oh, no. This is the problem. Because Elvis has not got full match fitness, we can't always rely on... It's, it's, a, it's a bit of an issue, basically. As you can see, he had to come off here on 48 minutes, too. Thankfully, his replacement did actually do very, very well for us. Apologies there, guys. For some reason, FM just minimised itself, and I have absolutely no freaking idea why. Um, <laughs> that makes no sense to me. But anyway, yeah, what was I saying? Slavi Danchev came off the bench to replace Elvis and actually scored two goals, and they were the winning goals in the end because Falcao's goal had given us the lead. But Accursio... Uh, ben well, that's a great name. Accursio Bentevigna um, equalised for Palermo before two goals from Slavi Danchev. Nice to see him just getting some, to be honest. But look at that. Again, 14 shots on target. We are really starting to get these big... We're starting to get more dominant in the games now, and that is very, very pleasing. I really don't know why that minimised itself, though. And finally, I really hoped that we could do this. Away at Sassuolo, I thought we could do it, but we just didn't have it in us. Um, once again, though, lots of shots on target. And the fact is, nothing really changed. It's just that we just didn't get the luck in this one. They were a bit better, but they were shooting from range relatively often basically uh, Daniele De Luca gave them the lead before Okan Kalkan who I actually knew something about because he's been considered from one of my Belgium squads my assistant keeps putting him in there but I don't really think he's that good um so I've taken him out basically because we do have some Belgium games coming up soon uh which you wore I don't know if I'll live com any or not really we'll have a look and see where they lay after this um so yeah just Seppi De Laurentiis did get one back for us in the end but it wasn't enough and we really should have done better really from what we had on the night uh, but the point is it's good to see those kinds of things starting to come to fruition so let's take a little look at the squad top goal scorer now is Baldicator Danchev with eight apiece Capra's up there with seven Elvis still has some work to do to start catching up but I think by the end of the year he probably will have caught them as for assists Capra Wang Jonho and Garcia with seven apiece man of the match not really any of standout candidates there either it's all very even and I like to see that um as for average writing, Wang Zhongho is probably the standout candidate there with a 7.5. And average, uh, sorry, average keeper. Key passes is 68 for him. As for value, I think he, oh no, Falcao just slightly tops it. We've got some good players though. But you can see how quickly it falls away. And that for me is the issue. So 22 million, 21 million, 17 million, and then it's just loops. And apparently we must have sold a lot of players in the summer. Yeah, we sold Pape Diallo to Spurs for 15 million. And a guy called Justin uh, Stuxke, Stuxket? Stuxtet. Oh, he's, he's Dutch. To Uniel de Madeira, who obviously are my Portuguese team, and they're actually in the top flight now on a rich, so that'd be an interesting one to go for at some point later in the save. Perhaps not, though, because obviously we're kind of in a good place now. Right, we're going to jump in because I don't want this episode to go on for too long, um, basically, just because, yeah. Um, so, let's just... Oh, right, actually, Beridia actually came in from Catania, the team we're playing today, uh, at the start of the season. So, ooh, they're going with a 
five at the back. That could be interesting, but also quite narrow. So we might still have a chance here. I, I think we should be able to beat Catania fairly comfortably. We're the home team after all. And um, they're in the relegation zone. And they like conceding goals. Well, not to the levels of Bologna and Verona, but they're, they're certainly up there on those charts as well. Um, so let's see what we can do. See what we've even got available. It's not too bad, actually. It's not too bad. They're all relatively fit because we've had some decent levels of breaks. Unfortunately, in terms of what we've got on the bench, it once again does become a slight issue. We've got Danchev, Serta, fair enough. Um, but other than that, Viviani maybe if we need him. It's just the that's the problem. We really do lack depth. And without the people like Zivkovic, Kater, Katerini, it really does make a difference. Right. I personally think, though, that today we should be able to relatively comfortably sweep Catania aside, like we did against Palermo. That's the last Livecon we won, was the first one we played at Roma, and that's disappointing, really. Uh, but I suppose it's because I was choosing all the massive games against bigger sides, in theory, um, to do that. Um, as you can see as well by the league table, we have actually overtaken Genoa. They've had a really slippery slope this month, and have actually fallen down as far as fifth, and are only a point ahead of Pescara. Um, they do have a game in hand, though, as do we, which means that we can potentially, um, if we win this, go nine points clear of them, and fourth place is looking more and more like a possibility now. Uh, again, don't know who that is, so we'll go with that. Let's see. Danilo, Jaramillo. Ah, yes. Okay. Right, let's do this. Um... I think we should be winning this one very, very comfortably, but I would settle for just winning it. Uh, what I want to see is the same kind of thing I've been seeing in every other game we've played this month, which is that kind of getting at least sort of 20 shots and at least sort of 10 on target out of those 20 shots. And usually if we do that, we win the match. That's generally the way it's gone this month. Oh, cleared away. De Laurentiis. And hopefully when we start getting some of the others back, it will just continue to make a stronger Garcia bursting into the box whips it across De Laurentiis and it's cleared away but Falcao will sweep up for us we're looking good to start with here this is what I like to see Capra out wide to Geronimo Garcia again he can skin his man and whip a ball in can he? he can it's cleared away again back to Garcia the early pressure is very very obvious Capra can he slip a ball through or will he shoot he does shoot and it's saved in the end uh, by Shrupsky or Skorupsky no it's Skorupsky but a good start from us a shot wow we've had five shots already 73% possession from the opening 10 minutes this is good this is a good start Pass completion is very high. Elvis inside. Well saved again. This has been a fantastic start to the match. Everything is massively in our favour, which presumably means we're going to lose this 1-0. Um, we've dominated every ass, every facet of this game so far. Jeremy over the top, though. Don't let them catch you out here, guys. Whipped it in all oh, my days. <laughs> yep, continue to do that for as long as you want, really. Wang Jong Ho, ball in. And Barile with the big header, and it's on the line, but it's in the back of that. I think that's an own goal in the end. It is Skorupski's bang that in his own net. Barile doesn't care. He's running off like... That's okay, fair enough. He just doesn't give a fuck. Nicely done. I love that. When players celebrate goals that they clearly had didn't score, it's fantastic. Um, that's, the, that's the start we needed. It's taken us 21 minutes. We've got the lead. It's a great header from Barile. Initially, the save is actually very, very solid. I don't know what he's doing on the line. <laughs> He sort of put that in with his penis. Um, but there you go. So there you go. 1-0. Um, Joachim Anderson's getting too close. We'll close him down. We actually started off very well and have sort of tailed off a little bit since then. But everything else is still working nicely in our favour. For now, though, I'm pretty damn pleased. But I'd like to see us score a good goal from open play. And um, maybe just see a little bit more from us in this second half. Although I sense that they'll have to come at us. They're going to have to. Because they'll need a goal. So I think... If we stay on counter, we should be okay, and we might be able to pick off a goal or two in the second half. That's the plan, anyway. Uh, I might get Danchev on for a bit, just because Elvis probably... He's still not got full match fitness, basically, and I don't want to risk getting him injured again. Thankfully, he's managed to get through a couple of injuries without too much problem, but, you know, we don't want to risk it, do we? Let's actually... Danilo's injured for them. They're getting quite a few injuries themselves. Right, let's make the change now. Let's just get Danchev on um, here. I would bring on Serta, but the problem is he's just got such low fitness levels at the moment because I think he played in a reserve game after a slight knock. Hmm, it's not as good as I was expecting us to play, actually. I, I thought we'd do better today, but then sometimes teams shut up shop and it actually takes a little bit more. Um, sometimes it's, I find that we play better against teams that attack us a bit more. Capra, and it's well won there by Lorenzo. Out wide to Alex Tellers. He's got a man overlapping. It's Garcia again, of course. Can he whip a ball in? He's got two men on him. Goes back to Tellers on the edge of the area. Can he find a pass? He can. It's Capra. Oh, it's unlucky from the defender again. It's flicked into the back of the net, and it's another own goal. Roma 2, Catania 0. Both of our goals have been own goals. Um... Yes, fair enough. Alex Tellers is ball here. In it comes to Capra. And I thought it could have deflected off of our player, but it doesn't, does it? No, it quite clearly goes in off there, man. And Capra will celebrate like he scored that because, you know, why the hell not? I'm pretty confident now. I'm, we've not had a lot of shots on target today. Now, we have... That's a worry for me, perhaps. But 
overall, let's give Sertor a little bit of a run out here to get, get him on for Capra. Just give him a little run. He's got a bit of potential, I think, Sertor, so we'll, we'll let him have a few games, hopefully, as a substitute. And I mean, a 2 0 win is not exactly emphatic, um, particularly with both goals being own goals. That wasn't quite what I expected, but overall, we've still been massively the better side and thoroughly deserve the win. And that's going to put us nicely into fourth spot now with a nine point gap. Um, only temporary, of course, because Genoa do have a game in hand. But that, for me, is starting to look very, very good for us getting into fourth place. And that is a pleasing thing to see. So, a man of the match goes to Geronimo Garcia. And I fully agree. He may not have got a goal or an assist, because well, obviously no one got any goals. But, for the most part, I've mentioned his name quite a lot. And if I mention their name quite a lot, then hopefully that's a good thing. Right, um, let's see. Uh, yeah, let's move it on. Right, let's have a look and see what we're going to be doing in the next episode. Um, now, as you can see, we've got some games coming up for Belgium, but I'm not sure whether to do what to do. So let's see, what would I pick as my next game for um, us? Oh, we've got Juve. Would I? Oh, it's a home game against Juve. You never know. I'm be tempted, actually. That's What's that? On the... It's the 5th of... Well, it's the 2nd of May. 2nd of May. Let's see if I've got any important Belgium games in between there that we could dive come if they're that important. So... Is literally just Scotland and Macedonia. Now, I will be live comming this one, though. It's our uh, Nations League semi-final against England um, in June. Now, if we win that, of course, we go to the final, and I don't know when that is, so it might be a double live com episode. We're not entirely sure how that one's going to work at the moment. So, yeah, um, I don't really think there's any point in live comming these sort of qualifiers. We might do, say, the Poland home game um, next later in the year basically I'm, that's the way i'm thinking i'm thinking juventus for the next episode why the hell not i know the big team ones we tend to lose but let's give it a crack i think we might be ready for them this time we're at home and you just never know what you can come up with so um <laughs> yeah apologies for the slight jumps in this video i hope it's not been too awkward um if you guys are like what you've seen please do drop a like on the video if we can hit 250 likes for getting ourselves up into the top well that'd be amazing and if you liked it even more than that please do subscribe to my channel for more outcaster icons and from the shadows in your inbox every other day at the moment at seven o'clock and i will see you guys in the next episode for a game against juventus which uh well let's face it that's going to be part of our running and um that could get a little bit hairy um although i do think fourth place is probably going to be in the bag for us very soon so i will see you guys in the next episode thanks for watching Bye bye